Hi there. Lesson 4B. Yes, I can. Всем здравствуйте. Урок 4B. Да, я могу. Grammar for today. Ability and possibility can, could, be able to. Vocabulary ED, ING adjectives. And pronunciation sentence, sentence stress. Итак, грамматика на сегодня это возможности и способности, модальные глаголы can, could, be able to, вокабуляр прилагательные с окончанием ed и ing и произношение ударения в предложении. Okay, now A. Look at the list of skills with a partner find. Two that you can do, two that you can't do. Two that you could do when you were ten years old. Two that you couldn't do when you were ten years old. Вот он этот список. Посмотрите и найдите две вещи, которые можете делать, не можете, могли делать, когда вам было десять, и не могли, когда вам было десять. Type fast using Excel spreadsheet. Uh, take good photos. Run five kilometers. Sing well. Sky. Uh, ski, sorry, swim, play tennis, play a musical instrument, need a, a saw, uh, ride a bike, change a car wheel, do yoga, dance, salsa. Обратите внимание, что здесь немая гласная. Need – это вязать, so – это шить. Угу. Остальные вроде все слова знакомые. Мы это сделаем с вами а на занятии. Будьте готовы, отметьте у себя в тетради. B. Look at the photos, listen and complete the conversation. Photo number one. Photo number two. And now let's listen. Four point twelve. One. I can speak Italian quite well. Lucky you. I'd love to be able to speak Italian. Two. When I was a child, I could draw really well. Really? I've never been able to draw. Okay, now look at the conversation one and two in B again. Complete the sentences. Посмотрите еще раз на диалог во втором диалоги и заполните пропуски. After that, please let's go to page 139 to Grammar Bank. После этого идем на страницу 139. Грамматика. For B, ability and possibility can, could, be able to. Итак, возможности, способности can, could, be able to. Let's start with can, could. Давайте начнем. Scanny could. Our daughter could play the violin when she was three. Наша дочь могла играть на скрипте, когда ей было три. So let's listen to these four sentences. Four point thirteen. I can speak three languages fluently. Jenny can't come tonight. She's ill. Our daughter could play the violin when she was three. They couldn't wait because they were in a hurry. So, can is a modal verb. It only has a present form, which can be used with future meaning, and a past or conditional form could. For all other tenses and forms, we use be able to plus infinity. Итак, can – это модальный глагол, у него есть только одна форма, используется в настоящем, иногда со значением для будущего. Есть еще и как conditional, да, условная, прошедшая форма could. А во всех других временах мы используем be able to, тоже как возможность, да, мочь, это не синонимичный. Be able to plus infinitive. Let's listen to the sentences. Four point fourteen. One. Luke has been able to swim since he was three. I'd like to be able to ski. I love being able to stay in bed late on Sunday morning. 
You'll be able to practice your English in London. 2. Fortunately, I am able to accept your invitation. My colleagues weren't able to come to yesterday's meeting. We use be able to plus infinity for ability and possibility, especially where is a no form of can, for instance, present perfect, infinitive, gerund, future. Мы используем be able to плюс неопределенную форму глагола для того, чтобы обозначить способность или возможность что-то сделать, особенно там, где can невозможно использовать. Например, в перфекте, в инфинитиве, в герундии, в будущем времени. Вот здесь это есть. I love being able to stay, you'll be able, да, you weren't be able, you weren't able to, вот в этих предложениях. We sometimes use be able to in the present and past instead of can, could, usually if we want to be more formal. А если мы хотим звучать более официально, то мы можем использовать даже be able в настоящем и прошедшем времени. And now there are exercises A and B. A. Circle the correct form. Tick if both are possible. Итак, выбираете первую форму. Можно отметить, если оба варианта видны. I've always wanted uh, to can or be able to dance salsa. Прошедшее перфектное время, да? Поэтому be able to. И все так делаем. B. Complete with the correct form of the verb. Uh, be able to. Positive, negative or interrogative. Форму be able to нужную вставляем. Может быть, утвердительное предложение, отрицательное или вопрос. I've never been, been able to uh, scuba dive. Никогда не умел заниматься подводным плаванием. Да? Вот. I've never been able to. Ставим в нужную форму. Это будет домашнее задание. Подкрутите в Classroom. And now let's get back to page 139. E. Look at the topics. Choose two or three and think about what you could say about them. Итак, смотрим на темы и подумайте, что вы могли бы сказать на эти темы. Something that you would like to be able to do. Something you've tried to learn but have never been able to do well. Something you learned to do after a lot of effort. Something you can do but you'd like to be able to do better. Something you think uh, all young people should be able to do before they leave school. Напишите одну-две вещи на каждый пункт, будьте готовы ответить. F. Work with a partner. Tell him or her about the things you choose in E. Give reasons or explanations for each one. I'd like to be able to ski, but I don't think I'll never learn because I don't live near the mountains. Например, вот выбрали какой-то один пункт и нужно его сказать, назвав причину, почему, например, хотел всегда кататься на лыжах, но не уверен, что получится, потому что живу далеко от гор. Вот, пожалуйста, будьте готовы, по порядку будем делать. Окей, okay, pronunciation, sentence, stress. Итак, произношение, ударение в предложениях. Now please listen to four sentences. Write the straight stressed words in the pink boxes. Послушайте сейчас предложение и нужно записать Слова, на которые падает ударение в предложении, вот в эти розовые э, прямоугольники. 4.15 1. He's never been able to dance. 2. We won't be able to come. 3. I'd love to be able to ski. Four. She hates not being able to drive. Okay. So now listen and make new sentences with the verbs or verb phrases you hear. I'd like to be able to ski. 
I'd love be, to be able to ride a horse. I'd love to be able to ride a horse. Да? Вот, послушайте, и нужно составить свои предложения. 4.16 1. I'd love to be able to ski. Ride a horse. I'd love to be able to ride a horse. 2. We won't be able to come. Park. We won't be able to park. 3. I've never been able to dance. Speak French. I've never been able to speak French. Four. So on and so forth. I think we should continue it uh, during our lesson. Okay, section three and it's listening. Read the text. Do you believe Malcolm Gladwell or George Kaufman? Learn a new skill in 20 hours. Давайте прочитаем этот коротенький отрывок. И кого мы, и поверим ли мы этим людям научиться чему-то новому за 20 часов. And now read about the Matt's past experience of learning the trumpet. Why do you think he gave up so fast? А теперь давайте прочитаем опыт Мэтта, который учился играть на трубе. Now listen and match. The sounds with the music words in bold. 4.17 1. not that easy if you are not into music, but, but try to do it. Итак, про, наверное, это не так просто, если вы не слишком увлекаетесь музыкой, но попробуйте. D. Now listen to Matt talking about his experience. Choose the best summary. Вот у нас есть три итога. Выберите самый подходящий к тому, что вы сейчас услышите. 4.18 I haven't played a musical instrument for years. Five years ago, I got a trumpet for my birthday, and I tried to learn it. But I gave up after seven minutes, and it ended up in the garage. So here I am, a beginner again. One hour. I have everything I need. YouTube trumpet lessons, and a book called Trumpet for Beginners. I plan to practice for 20 minutes a day, three times a week. I want to be able to play the trumpet, and I want to do it fast. Two hours. Well, that was optimistic. Playing the trumpet is more difficult than it looks. 
I can only play for ten minutes before I start seeing stars and my mouth hurts. I can get from C to G, but I can't get any higher. <laughs> It's depressing. Five hours. I'm now practicing for ten minutes at a time. I can play a whole octave from C to C. I've watched a lot of trumpet lessons on YouTube. The teacher has a beard and wears very colorful shirts. He's beginning to annoy me. So I'm going to stop watching videos and use books instead. Nine hours. I still can't play high notes. I can play some very simple tunes, but nothing I actually want to play. It isn't Rimsky-Korsakov. Fourteen hours. I've been practicing three times a week, but I'm not getting any better. I've put the trumpet in the wardrobe. Fifteen hours. One evening, I'm at a school concert and I meet Matilda Lloyd, one of Britain's best trumpet players. She was a winner in the BBC Young Musician competition in 2014. I ask her for help, and the following week she gives me a trumpet lesson. I'm doing everything wrong. I need to forget everything I learnt from the man with the beard and the colourful shirts. I need to start again. Seventeen hours. I'm getting better. My trumpet is starting to sound more like a musical instrument. I'm practising for half an hour every day. I'm enjoying myself. And the neighbor's dogs have stopped barking. 20 hours. I was planning to finish my 20 hours of practice by busking in the underground for an afternoon, but I can't do it. 20 hours is too little. But give me 100 hours and you'll see me playing the trumpet on a street near you. You may listen again for each stage and circle the correct word phrase. Послушайте еще раз и на каждой на каждом пункте, где он говорит один час практики, два часа практики, обведите ту фразу, которая больше всего подходит вот то, что он говорит. One hour, two hours, five hours, and etc. Do you think Matt will continue learning the trumpet? Why? Why not? Section number four. Speaking. Work in small groups. Answer the question below for the different skills. Мы будем работать по парам и отвечать на вопросы. How well do you think you'd be able to do these things after learning for 20 hours. Как хорошо ты думаешь, что будешь уметь это делать после 20-часовой практики? Play a musical instrument, speak a new language, draw a portrait, drive, design and build a website, take professional quality photos, cook a three-course meal, dance the tango, ski or Windsurf, give first aid. Think about it and give your reasons. Подумайте об этом и, пожалуйста, объясните, почему. Может, вы что-то умели делать. Может, наоборот, это для вас абсолютно новое. Или вы себя в чем-то пробовали, когда-то не получилось. Please be ready to give reasons. Okay, section number five. Vocabulary. 
Many adjectives related to feelings have two forms, ending in ed for the person who experiences the feeling, or ending in ing for the thing or person which produces the feeling. В английском языке много прилагательных, которые обозначают чувства, и у них есть два, две формы. Те, которые заканчиваются на ed, это когда человек испытывает это чувство, и прилагательные, которые заканчиваются на ing, это когда кто-то, вещь или человек производит это чувство. Probably you are familiar with some of these adjectives for interested, for in, for instance, interested or interesting. И сейчас мы расширим ваши знания. We're going to expand your knowledge. Вы знакомы уже с некоторыми такими прилагательными, например, интересный и интересующийся, да, interested, interesting. You may want to point out that not all adjectives for feelings exist in both forms. Stressed, it is stressful, not stressing. Scared, scary, not scary. И также хочу отметить, что не все прилагательные существуют именно в этих двух формах. Например, stressed, да, в стрессе, который находится человек, и stressful, как ситуация очень стрессовая. И scared, напуганный, или scary, пугающий. And now we please complete the sentences with annoyed or annoying. И здесь вам нужно в предложении вставить или... Первое или второе вариант прилагательного. And now uh, I've explained you the short information in the box. Then you should complete the adjectives with ed or ing. Я для вас уже объяснила, когда какое прилагательное используется. Если нужно, еще раз прочитайте. И это упражнение нужно использовать окончание или ed или ing уже сама часть как бы, прилагательного у вас есть вам нужно правильное окончание поставить в зависимости от смысла look through and be ready okay so the, you should do the exercise Next, uh, reading and speaking. How long have you been learning English? Has anyone ever given you a useful tip which has helped you learn? Как долго вы изучаете английский? Если у вас подсказка, может, вам кто-то дал совет, как лучше учить английский, вам это помогло. And now read some tips on a forum for, for learning English outside class. Do you do any of these things? Теперь прочитайте информацию с форума. Нельсон спрашивает, как лучше практиковать английский вне урока. Может быть, вы уже что-то из этого делаете. Okay, after you finished reading, let's switch to C. Read the tips again and match them to something that you think the person has learned to say in English. Еще раз прочитайте эти советы. И вот перед вами speech bubbles, и где есть um, высказывания. All you need is love. Love, love is all you need. For instance. И как вы думаете, к какой подсказке можно отнести uh, эту фразу? Или... Are you sure you want to shut down your computer now? Где может высветиться это высказывание? Why don't we stay in and watch a movie tonight, honey? Uh, I work for Samsung. I'm a computer programmer. I've been working here for three years. And etc. Now look at two sentences with reflexive pronouns from the tips in B. How do you say them in your language? Then read the information box. А теперь посмотрите на предложение, где выделены возвратные местоимения и как мы произносим их на русском. I can test myself whenever I get a quiet moment. Talk about yourself or your family. 
На русском здесь не всегда переводится возвратными местоимениями. Это у нас вообще-то в, в русском языке только одно местоимение возвратное – себя. Talk to a partner. Which of the tips in B do you think are the best for learning English? Are there any you don't think would work for you? И теперь обсуждаем подсказки, советы по изучению английского, которые для вас бы сработали. Какие вам кажутся классными? Are there any tips that you could easily put into practice? Какие вы можете легко применить? What other things do you do to improve your English outside class? Example, visit chat website, listen to audiobooks. И какие еще есть советы для того, чтобы изучать английский язык вне урока? Your speech should be fluent. Не забудьте, что ваша речь должна быть плавной и структурированной. Поэтому подготовьте свой ответ. And section 7 is listening, video listening. Do you know anybody who speaks two or more languages? Well, which languages do they speak? How did they learn them? Вы знаете кого-то, кто говорит на нескольких, на двух более языках? Сколько языков они знают и как быстро они выучили. Now you're going to watch an interview with Alex Rawlings, who speaks 11 languages. Uh, match greetings from one to end to the languages, then match part one and check. Мы сейчас послушаем с вами, посмотрим интервью с Алексом Роллингом. Он говорит на 11 языках, он полиглот, и потом мы сопоставим приветствия на разных языках. Алекс Роллинг became Britain's most multilingual student in 2012, when he won a national competition, which tested his fluency in 11 different languages. At the time, he was studying German and Russian at Oxford University. Originally from London, Alex has lived in Germany, Russia, Hungary and Spain, and he has gone on to learn more languages since he graduated. Bonjour. Shalom. Buongiorno. Goedemorgen. Yasas. Hola. Привет. Guten Tag. Hi. Bon dia. I've learned so many languages because uh, I'm hooked, basically, on learning languages. I think every new language to me is like a new world. It's a completely new adventure and uh, you meet totally different people, you have totally different experiences. I often say when, when you visit a country, when you um, speak the language, you really get to know that country, you really get to explore it for yourself. But when you visit a country and you don't speak the, the local language, you're relying on other people to explain what's happening to you. They're kind of, they're showing you their version of the country, but you can't really see it for yourself. Um, all, all of the languages that I speak are fun. I think that's why I've stuck with them and enjoyed speaking them. Um, 
I think I have the, the, the deepest emotional connection with Greek because my grandmother was from Greece and so uh, we use Greek in my family as well and I've, I've heard it ever since I was a child. But um, I also really like speaking German. Um, there are so many languages that I would love to learn in the future. As I said, I'm hooked, so... <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very interested in Chinese at the moment. Um, I work with um, someone from China who's teaching me little bits, and um, I think it's really cool when I hear her speaking to her family or friends on the phone in Chinese and think, wow, wouldn't it be really awesome to speak that? Um, I also I organize um, an international conference for polyglots every year, which moves countries. So um, last year it was in Iceland, and this year it's going to be in Slovenia. So I'd like to learn some Slovene as well before we go there for the weekend. I always feel a little bit guilty that I'm from the UK, but I've never really learned any of our local languages here. So I've never learned Welsh, I've never learned Irish, I've never learned Scottish Gaelic. And um, I went to Wales recently and, and loved that we had everything in two languages. You walk into the supermarket and you see all these languages everywhere. And I thought, I think it would be really cool to learn a language which is very close to where I live and that I could use. So I'd love to learn Welsh one day too. The, the biggest challenge for me for learning a new language was with Russian. Um, there were a number of things that I wasn't expecting to be hard that were. Um, for example, there's a whole new alphabet, which it's not too different to English, you get used to it, but when you're trying to learn a word, um, it's just an extra barrier to memorizing that word. First having to read it and understand what all of the letters mean, and then having to actually memorize it. So there's that extra layer there. Um, technology has been an amazing resource for me, um, especially when I was growing up actually with um, YouTube and things like that. I was able to sort of come home from school and immediately immerse myself in this world um, of another language. I could just watch uh, videos in different languages all evening and it was like I was there. It was like I was living in the country. So um, the internet has brought all of those cultures much closer to me and, and made them much more accessible. And um, since then, I think there's, there's now a lot of um, technology out there to help you learn vocabulary or to teach you grammar. Okay, there is part three. Итак, сейчас будет еще третья часть. As well as learning languages himself, Alex has also taught intensive language courses. He also appears in the media and regularly attends events organized by institutions such as the European Council and the British Council to promote language learning and multilingualism. He has also written a book, How to Speak Any Language Fluently. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so, put, so put it this way, I've never met anyone who couldn't learn a language. You know, I mean, if they had the right motivation, the right time allocation, uh, the right resources and the right expectations, I've never met anyone who's had all of those things in place and still failed. Um, but many of us fail to learn languages because one of those things is not there. We don't have enough time, we're not doing it for the right reasons, or we expect it to be a lot easier than it actually is. Well, um, the easiest language for me to learn was definitely Afrikaans because um, the grammar is very, very simple. So there are almost no irregular verbs. Uh, there's only three real tenses you have to worry about. And a lot of the vocabulary in Afrikaans is very similar to vocabulary in English. So for example, um, there's this sentence which is my pen is in my hand and my hand is in warm water, which in Afrikaans is my pen is in my hand and my hand is in warm water which, you know, is very, very easy for English speakers to learn. So, um, the easiest languages to learn are the languages that are most similar to the one you speak natively, because you, you don't have to learn so many new concepts, and maybe you can already understand a lot of the vocabulary because it's similar to what you already know. Um, 
Um, I think British and American people think that they're not very good at languages. I think um, we don't have much confidence um, because when we go abroad to other countries, we um, we expect people to speak English, people expect us to speak English, so we never get a chance to practice the little bits of other languages that we might know. I think the, the most important thing for someone who wants to learn a new language to remember is that nothing happens overnight. Um, learning languages is a lifelong activity and you basically you never finish. You never get to that finishing line where you think, right, what should I do next? Um, when you learn a new language, you need to um, accept the fact that there will always be more to learn, no matter how much you learn. And so the best approach is to just start doing it in little steps, just doing, say, 10 to 15 minutes a day, whenever you can find time around your routine, and then building that up over a year or two years before um, you really start to feel very confident using that language. So now exercises. So B is match greetings from 1 to 11 to the languages. Then watch part 1 and check. Ну, мы сначала посмотрели, и потом уже будем сопоставлять. Может, на память сделаете, да? Я думаю, что здесь очень легко, вы справитесь. Now watch part 2. Why does uh, Alex mention? По второй части. Что... Почему это упоминает Алекс? Uh, a completely new adventure. Greek and German. Chinese and Slovene. British and under Irish languages. A recent trip to Wales. Russian. YouTube vocabulary and grammar. Watch part 3 and answer the questions. Why do people something, sometimes fail to learn a language? Why did Alex find Afrikaans easy to learn? Why do the British and American... Americans find it difficult to learn foreign languages. Complete Alex tips. You never try to spend and etc. Да, это третья часть. Мы отвечаем на вопросы. Если нужно, пересмотрите эти части, отмотайте назад. Уверена, вы справитесь. Будьте готовы с ответами. And that's it for now. Thank you for your work. Waiting for your home assignments. And see you. Bye-bye. На этом все. Жду ваших заданий. Увидимся на паре. Всего хорошего. До свидания.